Welcome to The Journey Principles, where we show you how to go from stuck to unstoppable with life strategies that work. Now, here's your host and creator of the Transform You Framework, Stephen Scoggins. Hey guys, good morning. Thursday morning, Journey Principles. I'm happy to be here with my co-host, Connor Kraft, Director of Connections, here to take you from stuck to unstoppable. If this is your first time here, we love you and we're happy that you're here and hopefully going to give you some content to help you catapult your life to the new future. And for those of you who have been here a long time, you already know how we roll and that my boy Connor Kraft is going to tell us what the feature content is for the day. So what are we doing today, my friend? Yes, sir. So on Tuesday, we had podcast episode nine where we talked about how to kill bad habits. Uh, we went through our, I can't remember if it was three or four steps uh, uh, yeah, five, process. Five, total. five, okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, there were like three main categories or something. But we yeah. talked about the three yep. uh, or the five steps yep. to basically kill bad habits. Uh, and then now we're going to dive deeper into that concept, which is the concept of principle-based living versus yeah. habit-based living. You said that you had a blueprint for yeah, overcoming so bad I habits. For, so, first of all, I want to I talk about that for just a second. So, yeah. um there's no secret that my life has been transformational. There's no secret that I've been through a lot and have now been on the other side of some things. And I'm sure I'll have to go through some more things to get to another level, which is it's the, it's the natural progression of how this works. But one thing I have discovered is the use of principles. Um, and a principle could be, uh, in fact, a good, a good example of principles would be the Ten Commandments. Okay. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness, right? Those are principles. So they're essentially okay. rules to live your life by. They're rules to live your life guidelines, by. Guidelines, I guess. Yeah, is I would say more rules. guidelines. Or they're, they're, what they allow you to do is kind of make the decision before you have to. And we'll get into that in a second. But uh, one of the things that I like about principles specifically is they're easy to identify, right? Because if the reason a principle is easy to identify is a lot of times you can start with your desired outcome. Like say, okay, I want to have more integrity in my life, Okay. Well, that tells you that the principle you need to live by is one of character. You need to shape your character, right? So principle is I constantly shake my character. So if you, like, let's say, want to be a better father, a better mm -hmm. husband, yep. better wife or whatever, yeah. um, and you know that you have issues with your integrity or your mm -hmm. character, you say, okay, my outcome is I want to be a better type of person yep. here. I want to live and operate in more integrity. Mm -hmm. So you have so to find the a rule? principle. Yeah, so what's the rule that I could live by to make that a reality? Um, well, the place where my mind goes is mm -hmm. like, if I was trying to learn those things and build my character, mm -hmm. I would make a principle that I live, live by be that, A, I always do what is right, I always operate okay. with integrity, and B, I'm always looking to stretch and improve my character okay. and, and grow it over time. Okay, so take Does number, that count as a principle? Yeah, it could, yeah, absolutely. Take number one, for example. Okay. okay. You said, so you wanted to do what on number one? Always live uh, within the boundary of integrity. Okay, so you want to always live within the boundary of integrity. Let's assume that you've been in a relationship for a long period of time. Okay. Right, and you're a committed relationship, and you told this, this girl that, hey, look, we're going to be a committed relationship, we're good to go. Okay. Well, and you're saying, I want to be a man of integrity. Well, all of a sudden, a little hottie comes over and starts flirting with you. What do you do? Well, if I've committed to being a man of integrity, then it shouldn't even be something I have to think about. Exactly. So that's the point of a principle. That's exactly right. So that so if you didn't have that prior commitment to the principle of mm -hmm. becoming a man of yep. integrity, then the little hottie comes over, and, and you're then like, you're like, oh, I'm a little hey, tempted. Yeah, what's your, what's your, where's your number? What's your digits? I see. Okay. Right? It's commitment, right? Principles provide commitment. So by by identifying uh, the principles that you the way so are, are the principles like the way you want to live your life? The principles are the guiding, um, prin well, the guiding proof of your life. I like to say it this way, okay? Uh, imagine a railroad track in in your mind, okay? Principles are the railroad tracks that give you predictable destinations. Okay, so 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 if are your you life is if your you're life is the train, like you're the train, right? Okay and you want to go to a specific destination, your train needs to be on a specific set of tracks. Tracks, Right. Okay, so <clears throat> we use honesty for another one. All right, another principle could be, I'm going to be finan I'm going to be a great financial steward. That's a good example. Okay, so if I want to be a great financial steward, then even though my emotions at times may want to prevent me from selling things or moving on or holding on to things too long, if my financial picture says that I should sell and move on, I'm going to make a wise or wisdom-based decision to protect the financial integrity of my family. 
because you've committed to being a good steward of wealth. Exactly. Okay. And because what happens is, it's just like I learned in my childhood, when my father tried to hold on to our house too long, what happened anyway? We lost you the lost house. lost it. Exactly. So if you're going to be a good financial steward, then you need to know what the, the financial principles are that steward good financial stewardship. So I guess the end result, if this is a train track then, yeah. let's say that you're starting in Miami and you're going to New York. Okay. And New York in this metaphor is you're totally good with your wealth. You are a good financial steward. That's where you want to go. Yep. Um, but Miami is wherever you are right now. It doesn't yeah. really matter if your finances well, are Well, Miami's known as a bit more of a party city, so I guess it makes sure, sense. Sure, yeah, <laughs> well, wherever you are. I just picked two random cities. Yeah. And so you want to get there. So what are you saying with this train tracks? And I just want to understand what you mean when you say All right, so let me try. I'll try to – I'm going to use the financial one because that's the easiest one for me to articulate. Yes. All right. So when I was in the, the realms of more po poverty-minded mentality, okay, I let my habits of spending control my spending. Okay. However, because I want to be a good financial steward, one of the financial principles I have to live by is never outspend my means. Always live within my means. Okay. That is a principle, right? In order to live within my means, there are sub principles like save a certain amount of money, put a certain amount of money away a month, spend a certain amount of money, give a certain amount of money. All right. All of those create financial stewardship. Does that make okay. sense? Yes. Okay, riddle it back to me and tell me, I'll make sure you got it. Okay, so basically what I've got is that if you want to live your life in a specific way and you outline mm -hmm. a principle as being, I want to be a good steward yep. of financial resources, mm -hmm. um, and you want to be basically financially secure is kind of the outcome that I assume yep. you would be wanting or the reason why you yep. want to be a good steward of wealth. Um, so if you want to get there, but you keep finding that you're making the wrong decisions every single month, you're mm -hmm. making foolish financial decisions out of bad habit, yeah. which is what this whole week is about is habits. Yeah, yeah. Right. So let's say you have a bad habit of handling your money and where you spend it all before mm -hmm. you actually, uh, well, you spend it all. That's <laughs> you spend basically it all. So there's nothing there, you to, spend it all. There's there's nothing there to save, you're, nothing there to invest, right, nothing there exactly. to give. So, yeah. so, so you're not being smart with your money out of habit yeah. and you're saying, okay, I'm going to identify a principle of this is what I want my life to be like. I want to have nicer things. I want to be in a financially good place. So yep. I need to, my actions need to represent a person who stewards wealth properly, I guess. Yeah. So what I'm trying to understand is I understand everything up until that point where you're, you have a bad habit that is keeping you stuck financially. You mm -hmm. keep doing those same wrong things, but you know where you want to go and it's going to require you to live your, your life by a separate set of principles. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm curious about, and we kind of touched on on the last podcast, I think where you're going with this is once you've identified your principle, the next step is to figure out a routine that's that right. you can put in place right. to actually change your habit into something that's, right. that's actually getting you and guiding you like train tracks yeah, exactly. towards New York City or wherever you're going, that's which exactly is right. a financially secure your individual that's exactly right and okay. you can use it for any any of your eight pillars you can use it um, on all seven layers and seven stages of life mastery so the principles are like train tracks mm -hmm. because if you think about They're train tracks always you, can't, you, you can't go off of them you can't no, divert exactly right so when you have train tracks that are taking you from Miami to New York you can't go to Los Angeles Mm -mm. You can't. There's no train tracks there. Not unless you want to jump the track, which, which is a problem. Good luck. <laughs> he won't get you there. So, <laughs> Last time I saw a train uh, jump the track, it ended up in jackknifing in, in, in a billion pieces. So, oh man. I hope All right. So let's, okay. let's let's do a little quick recap. So this is why um, this is why I choose not to live out of habits, which is why I don't particularly I particularly don't like the word habits. I like rituals and like routines. I like those because they're predictable, right? Habits are just sort of a little um, re, uh, review from last ones. Rely on willpower alone. Focus on delayed gratification or focus on instant gratification. Have vague, have vague intentions. Um, they underestimate surrounding influences. Um, there is a reactiveness versus a planning. There's with, a with, with, with who? With habits. Okay. Right, so these are the negative aspects of So when you're habit. living by living. habits, you're going to experience these things. You're going to experience these things, okay. okay, which means you're going to be more stuck, more overwhelmed, and more frustrated, right? right? Nobody wants to feel those things, yeah. right? So that means that the only person standing in your way many times is yourself. It's you looking against right? the mirror and saying, okay, yeah. I need to kill these habits. Yeah, so here's some benefits from, from living by principles, okay? Right. And there are lots of principles, right? So um, if I want to... If I want to live a principle of financial stewardship, I'm going to take certain actions, actions handling money, okay, specifically, right? 
But principals make decisions before you have to, just like what we just talked about with the little hottie coming up in front of you. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be an honest man of integrity, doesn't matter how cute she is, doesn't matter where she's from, doesn't matter if you just had a fight with your girlfriend, right? Or boyfriend in this right. case, depending on, uh, depending on who's watching, right? Or listening, I should say. Doesn't matter. You've already decided I'm committed. Yeah, this is the principle I've decided to live exactly. my life off of. It's not dependent on right. whatever's happening in any given right. moment. That's right. Okay. Principles also look for the long game, right? Principles are always guiding you toward, towards long-term legacy-based solutions, right? If you handle your money well today and continue following the same set of principles for a continued length of time, then yes, there's no, there's no problem with you actually stewarding wealth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's just consistency over time, right? Because the principal already handles and makes the decision before you have to. So you get the money. You already know you're, you're, already, you're already committed. I'm going to be a financial steward, right? So you already put the money in a specific place. So how do you actually go about identifying the principal that you need? So like, like I don't know a lot of people who would just go straight to like financial stewardship. The way that they yeah. say it in layman's terms is like, I want to be more financially secure. Yeah. Or I want to stop uh, living paycheck to paycheck. Like they know okay. those outcomes. So, so how does that person take the outcome in layman's terms of what they want to accomplish? Yeah and turn that into a principle that they can live their life around. Well, think about it. Is there a rule that can give them the outcome they want? Well, I guess if you look at it, it simply enough as saying, okay, if I am better with money and I treat my money, I mean, that's a very, very high level. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I would, I would take it and say, okay, you want to stop living paycheck to paycheck. You want to have more money. Mm -hmm. You want to be more financially secure in your financial pillar or area mm -hmm. of life. Yeah. So if you want to do that, you're going to have to look at what you're doing right now and you're going to have to see what needs to change. And then you're going to have to create a principle, which is this is my new way. Exactly. Okay. It's your new train track. So, um, we oh, used that's good. Okay. So you, you take the old, which wasn't really train tracks. It was yeah. just, you're going all over the place. <laughs> exactly. And you're saying, okay, I'm going to put these guide rails here now yep. and say, this is what I'm going to live within. Because if I, if I, if you jump off the train tracks, you're not going to get to LA. Yeah. Not you're just going to land at a ditch and that's, you're it's gonna, not good. You're not going to feel good. Yeah. <laughs> right? So if, if we use financial security as an example. So if you look at financial security, there, there are two components of financial security. There's income and expenses. Okay? When it comes to becoming financially secure, you want to raise your income while reducing your expenses, mm -hmm. which sense. creates margin. Pretty simple. Okay? Financial stewardship is going to mean I'm going to save a specific way. I'm going to invest a specific way. I'm going to spend a specific way. I'm going to give a specific way. Right? Those are all principles. So how you give would require a principle to determine how you give, meaning I'm going to give to the things that I'm passionate about, and I'm also going to give to the things that make sense from a percentage base, right? Things within my, my, my realm of uh, framework here. All right, so other things that the principles do uh, for us over habits um, is they have clear directions and expectations, right? We've been talking about this train track. We've been talking about this train, your life being the train. You're going up and down the train track, right? Trying to get mm. to some place specifically. Your destination determines where you're going. So does, 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 does having principles, like with the uh, example of the, the girl who's mm -hmm. coming up and, you know, the, the hottie. <laughs> and and uh, so you're tempted, but you've already committed to, nope, I'm going to be a good boyfriend, good husband, good yeah. whatever. Um and so I'm not going to entertain that. Does that make that decision easier because you've already pre-committed to that? Um, if you're really committed to, to principle-based living, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I've been married now for five, uh, pushing six years to my beautiful wife, Karen, who I love deeply. And I'm sure both of us have had people come up to us and trying to like, hey, you know. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, kind of deal. And I'm just not, I'm not down for it. I'm like, I love my wife. She's amazing. She's stuck by me. Um, when, when times got tough, I mean, when, when we had to deal with the whole business thing that we, we didn't know what was going to happen, you know, so, um, all because she's having health struggles doesn't mean I get to go pay Wampa room. You right. see what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, she's my wife. I'm committed to my wife. Right. So that's, that is a principle commitment. Principle is a commitment, right? Honesty is a principle, right? Integrity is a principle. Perseverance is a principle, right? Getting back up is a pre predetermined choice so our principles almost they all almost sound like they're rooted in character traits to me like most they of, largely most are of them character sound, traits yeah they are largely are there's a most of them are character traits in some way shape or form for sure okay right um the other thing is they choose your influences before they choose you so your principles will guide who you hang out with right 
what environment you, you spend the most time in. So if you're trying to become financially successful and financially secure, you're not going to go out clubbing every Saturday or Thursday through Saturday, I should say, like I used to back way I mean, back in the day. Unless you're making a lot of money. And even well, then, that's probably but not But even smart. then, what what else could you be doing with that money to carry your future further? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, so that's, that's a whole different use that time conversation. More. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, they create progress instead of procrastination. Principles eliminate a lot of procrastination because they remove roadblocks, right? Um, procrastinating on whether or not you're telling someone the truth or not because you how you think they're going to feel. If, you're, if your principle is honesty, then you're going to be talking. It makes it harder to have that argument with yourself because you can basically exactly. say, hey, hang on. Yeah, I know she's hot, but, <laughs> but hold on a second. You just told yourself three months ago that you are committed yep. to being a better man and your side yep. of the relationship. That's right. And now you're going to even question this decision? Uh-uh. Exactly that's, right. That's ba- okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's, that's what I call falling for the bait, right? Make no, make no mistake. As soon as you decide you're going to follow a, a specific set of principles, you're, there are going to be bait traps set out for you to get you off track, to get your train off the track, right? That's not what you want to do. You want to keep your train on the track so you can get to a predictable and reliable destination in a reliable time frame. So in the last podcast, we had everybody basically write down what are the biggest things that, that they want to work on, mm-hmm. biggest habits. That's right. So, and we gave them a few other steps on that podcast as well, but uh, the next step that I think we briefly touched on last time that we said we would talk about in this podcast is once you've identified the habits you want to fix, yeah. you then have to figure out, it does it then go to identifying the principle that you want it to become? The, yeah. I mean, like I said, consider consider the principles being a, a set of railroad tracks, right? Um, you you mentioned last time uh, too, you mentioned biting your nails and uh, follow through, I think it was. Yeah, like procrastination, right? wanting to go think, waste time, goofing off. Stuff okay, like so... That. Um, what what principle would you put in place to overcome the procrastination side? What is one decision that if you make it today can guide further decisions behind it? I don't know. It's tough for me because my mind goes to instantly to basically like, well, I mean, you could commit to it. You could just because like I have a decision every day whether or not yeah. I'm going to stay focused. But it's like that hasn't really. So what worked last time? So I've had like small moments where I, I'll feel like crap and then mm-hmm. I force myself to do it in, uh, mm-hmm. in spite of feeling like crap. And then within like an hour, I actually feel like doing it mm-hmm. because I have momentum now. Mm-hmm. So that's the closest thing that I've really found to like, that's the one that I, I personally deal yeah. with sometimes is because just it, it's, it's, it's sometimes difficult for me. I'm so ADHD <laughs> that for me to just like stay on task. And it's yeah. really something I'm hard on myself about because I want to be highly efficient. And okay. I compare myself to you and a lot of people who are very, very high performers in the business yeah. world. And I'm just over here basically feeling like I'm in a, a gnat phase. Okay. And I'm just going all over the place. Yeah. So like, I guess this, I, I've tried it over and over again. To tr- I've tried to think my way out of it. That yeah. never worked. The Uh only stuff that's ever really kind of worked is if I have that turning point where I'm like, crap, I need to do this and I don't feel like it Mm -hmm. and I want to get up and think, but I say, no, you're not going to get up and think. You're going to sit here and you're going to at least do 15 minutes of this. Mm -hmm. That's, That's really the secret is I found that if I can just get myself, yeah, if I can just get myself to do even five minutes, like, all right, Connor, you don't have to write the whole report right now. You just have to sit down and plan the outline. It'd mm-hmm. take 10 minutes, plan the outline. I find that when I, and I'm miserable, I don't want to do the report, mm-hmm. but if I take the 10 minutes to do the outline, which is a little bit easier, yeah. so it's less to chew off, I do that, and then after doing the outline, I'm like, well, I can write the first part of this, so that's pretty, and then I do that, and then yeah. I'm like, oh, I can do the second, and then maybe I will want a break in the middle, but yeah. then I already have some progress, so I can take that break and Because then you want to finish the story, too. I can take that break and come back, and then I yeah. feel good about the progress yeah. I made earlier, and it's not as big of a mountain. So the one principle that I saw you implement that's been getting you a lot of progress is the principle of planning your day, hmm. right? Your principle of planning your day keep, gives you a roadmap for that day alone. Plan your day, and then the, the next thing that I really need to implement is more of what I just said. If I can make that a habit, mm-hmm. it's a perfect time to talk about this. That's, but that's right. if I can take that, that the do it now principle, Mm-hmm. And basically have a thing where I, I agree with you 100%, by the way. If I have my day planned ahead of time, mm-hmm. we're about to get into routines for me, too, because <laughs> I just thought of this. I'm like, well, okay, so if that's my biggest issue right now, which is one of them, I, yeah. I want to be able to just go get here in the morning and just be laser focused until nighttime mm-hmm. or until I leave or whenever. 
Um, so if I want to do that, though, then I need to take that principle of the do it now principle or mm -hmm. planning your day, and I have to build it into a routine. Mm -hmm. So what I was so thinking the principles is do the hard work first. Yes. So what I'm yeah. thinking is, is like, would an example of a routine be like for the plan your day? What if I plan my day always before I go to sleep so that yeah. when I wake up in the next morning, I already have that planned out and that hurdle is already crossed. And all I need to do the next morning is say, okay, what's the first thing on my plan for the day? And I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to force myself to do the first 10 minutes of that rather than for worrying about, oh, this is a five hour project I have to do first today and overwhelming myself and wanting to go put it off and yeah. think, which is usually what I do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Wait till you write, set out to write your first book. Yeah, wait till I actually uh, <laughs> implement some of these things, and then in a few podcasts, I'd be like, "Guys, this is yeah. awesome." Well, and and you have been implementing these things. You're 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 definitely more focused than you than you were two years ago. You've been far I'm more, more focused than I was six months ago. I, exactly. Which is way. precisely why I'm saying, principle-based living will always give you promises for your future. Right. If you use the principles to guide your financial choices, you will have a financial promise meaning you'll have prosperity, you'll have a level of abundance, but only if you do the hard work first, right? If you follow, matter of fact, if you have the principle of doing the hard work first, you force yourself to do the hard work first and you get to have more enjoyment, right? There, each one of these principles offers a promise. And if you would just take the time to live the principles, you can also live the promises. I think one of the things that we probably need to do, Connor, is probably come up with the top 25 principles to live by. Ooh, that'd be a cool And then piece give of it content. and give it out to everybody um, and, and kind of make sure we have that access to what that. What if we separate, like, what if we do four or five for each pillar? I was going to do seven for each pillar, actually. Top seven things. Yeah, that's How a lot many of is that? Seven times, It's a bunch. Seven, seven times, times eight. eight's 56. Dang, but, you're quicker than me at the math stuff, man. <laughs> well, it's just basic multiplication. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like you even said. I, even I was like, all right, what's eight times eight? And then let's subtract eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I do it. So I, was, I would have been like 64 because yeah. I know my times table is okay. And then yeah. I've been like, all right, minus eight. Oh, yeah, 56. Cool. We'll call it the seven but seven for eight rule or something. Yeah, that's I'll, cool. I'll draw it out so we make sure we do this. Yeah, so we'll come up with the top seven uh, principles to live out in every single eight pillars. That's going to give you the most traction and, and hopefully get you there further faster. That's going to be a valuable piece of content. Yeah, I think that would that be one. amazing. Because there's and, people who are struggling in finances but mm -hmm. not relationships, but they just want to know what are the seven things I need to do Well, and the finances. tricky part is too is if you – if. The tricky part is you can be focused in finances right now and not relationships. And all of a sudden, oh crap, my relationship's in a problem. And you pivot and all of a sudden your finances are in a problem. And you, that's, How do you deal with that? that's stuck. Right. Well, first of all, um, just like you had to learn to do. So we had, so because of the Connor virus, we've, we've been. Um, By the way, every time you say, I have to, I have to point this out. Connor, this for Cone Rona, you sorry. You keep saying the Connor virus. And I'm like, <laughs> bro, dude. <laughs> You keep going to the right. Connor virus, not it's, the coronavirus. Yeah, coronavirus. So because of the coronavirus, we hit, we took us a little while to get in here and get get things recorded. All right? right. But if you remember, one of my principles is I want to make sure that I give time to my family as much time as I'm giving to all these other things, right? Because I love my family. I don't want them to feel isolated or whatever. So what did I have you do in order for me to come in and hang out and record uh, a, a lot of shows with you? Oh, you literally made me ask your wife. That's right. <laughs> yeah. He was like, all right, you get to tell Karen. And I was I, like, no, I didn't oh. say tell. I said ask. <laughs> yeah. Because if, if she wasn't cool with it, yeah. we wouldn't have spent time recording shows. Yeah. Basically. Right. It says, that, that but, that's, cool, but that's a principle. I love my wife. I love my kids. I want to see them. I want to be with them. And I know that I naturally, I have a natural tendency to be a bit of a workaholic. Right, and it's Saturday morning. And we have Saturday had morning the time to do the podcast. I've I was been dealing with the coronavirus out. stuff for the last like, two guys, weeks. I was like, guys, we like, like, I'm we're, we're trying to release these podcasts <laughs> on a schedule, and I'm like, dude, this one needs to go live in four days. We have to record it. She's yeah. like, let's do it in a Zoom. I'm like, no. Well, you were sick, and I was like, do you have the cooties? I, I don't, don't have the coronavirus. I'm fine. You did have the cooties. I had something. I think I had a cough or something. It wasn't corona. No, it sounded more like the eh, death. That's what it sounded like. But anyway. No, but you know, but I wanted to make sure we're in a healthy place to do that. But because of my prince, my principle is family, right? My family has already sacrificed a lot of my time for all these different business ventures and all the things I've got my hands in, right? My my kids are about to go to a college, right? My daughter's already living on her own. My grandson is out there. Yes, I have a grandson. It's a long story. We'll, t we'll do on another another podcast, <laughs> right? Yes, I'm 44. Yes, my daughter's 23 or four. I didn't, I didn't say that, but anyway, um, you see what I'm saying? Like I, the, they're important to me, right? 
right? They're about to go off and fly the nest and kind of go do their, you know, like do their life and like, you know, start to build their own futures and stuff like that. Now, what I have tried to do with them is I've tried to instill the principles that have led me to a successful future. And I think um, we talk about a lot of the principles pretty much on every show. There's a reason or a rule that if you do this, this will happen, right? Principles have this if then or if this, then that effect. Yep, I love that. Right? Principles are if you do this, then this will happen. If you do this, then this will happen. If you save money, there'll be money in your bank account, right? If you spend money, there'll be no money in your bank account. So you wait, hang on, back up. <laughs> You're saying that the results people are experiencing today are directly resulting from decisions that they made in their past? Absolutely. What? All right, so we, you and I have been in here rec um, recording all kinds of shows and all kinds of content for our tribe to make sure that we've had the time to help our people and to help our audience understand how to live a, a higher quality of life and, and complete our mission of going from stuck to unstoppable, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, because our audience comes from a variety of backgrounds, a variety of starting points and stuff like that, we try to pick a piece of content that makes sense that anyone can mull over and chew on, Okay. The reason I'm able to sit in here with you right now and not be out doing something running one of the businesses is because of the work that I did 10 years ago. Because you put in all that work 10 years ago mm -hmm. to build a business that was able to operate at the level where it could operate without needing your time 24-7. Without needing it 24-7. Still needs my time. Right. But nowhere near every every hour on the hour it's not like a startup like this is right now yeah. where i'm like bro i need you <laughs> come on <laughs> what are we doing yeah and we're and we're gonna do it and we're gonna we're gonna continue helping people we're gonna continue changing lives but when it comes down to principles just simply think if this then that right if i do this then this will happen and if you'll just do that alone if this then that if this then that if you'll just do that then you will begin to get results because the principle, the only way you get to if this, then that is the principle. There's a bridge in the middle, right? If I save money, there's money in my account. If I'm faithful to my wife or to my husband, I'm going to have a greater, a better relationship, right? If I take the time to invest in time and training in my career, then I can expect to have a promotion, right? If this, then that, right? Honesty, integrity, character, perseverance, resilience, faith, grit, like all of those are principles that take you to a brighter future. All of those. So I'll tell you what, audience, we got literally 60 seconds left. So we're going to say goodbye here in just a second. In the meantime, I need you guys to hold me accountable and being accountable is one of my principles. If I don't produce these seven principles for each of the eight pillars of life in the next 30 days, I want to hear from you guys. Ooh. Yep. Challenge me. Okay. I want to hear from you guys to make sure I've got that to you guys. As soon as we have that, I'll put that on the journeyprinciples.com slash resources and put it as a free resource there that you can go and download and hopefully get you well on your way to uh, maximizing your life and stuff like that. So from all of us here at Journey Principles, we love you. We're crazy about you. Don't forget questions at journeyprinciples.com and we'll see you again on the next Journey Principles. Take care. See you guys. I'll see you in the next video. And please, if you don't mind and you enjoyed the life mastery content we're building, Consider hitting the subscribe button and also hitting the bell so you'll be the first to get notified anytime we release new content.